me, and I'm looking forward to this, this conversation. How's everything back in Accra? Because you're in Accra. I'm missing Accra. Um, <laughs> Already. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Going? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's good here. It's good here. Excellent. 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 Well, I'm glad that you uh, took some time uh, to with us today. And I really, really want to learn more about who you are. And I think it's important uh, because you have a lot of different things going on. And, and part of uh, my, my goal is to be able to be able to bridge that in African diaspora so people understand the, the similarities, what we have in common, because so often we'll hear, hear oh, this is different. You, you know, our cultures are different and they are different. However, there are a lot of similarities. So, 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 so walk me down uh, a little bit about who you are and then, then we'll talk about your career and your businesses and, uh, and, and, and we'll just kind of from there. Well, uh, the pleasure is mine uh, to be here. And thank you for the other time uh, being on my channel as well. We had a good time. Yes. yes. I actually cut the video and sent to a lot of people. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a, so, a lot to uh, say, a whole lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my name is Kabna Obindako. Uh, was born in Ghana, bred in Ghana. Uh, I'm of uh, Asante. Uh, um, you know, if you have to define me, uh, of the track. Uh, I schooled in Ghana, first degree uh, engineering, and then I did second degree in Ireland, uh, process engineering as well. Uh, I'm uh, an entrepreneur. We have I've built businesses uh, with my wife, Marie. Uh, we have three children. I write books as well. I have three books and I have a YouTube channel. Our businesses and retail uh, into real estate development and uh, construction as well. You know, so yeah, you sound like you like you might, might be related. <laughs> we, we might be related somehow. Now, so your name that's uh Tuesday born. Yeah, it's Tuesday born. All right. Yes. All right, and, and I'm called Kojo. Yes, Kojo. Monday Kojo, born. Kojo, 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 Kojo. That's right. That's right. I'm getting getting it because because there's a lot of people corrected me when I first started my journey. I didn't understand that it pronounced twee, and, mm. and I would say. Tweet, tweet because in English C T W I U I. So it's tweet. But mm -hmm. when I guess tweet <laughs> you, you yeah. it's, it's, it's a little extra in there. Mm -hmm. Um and, and so you know, so now I'm learning learning and of course obviously obviously understanding the di different uh, days of the week of the week. So that uh, as far as far as names as part of of the addition uh for the, the Ashanti the Ashanti um uh, tribe, it is to have, have I guess the, the first name is the day you were born on, and mm -hmm. they have your, your a different name. I, I guess they call it a spirit name or something like that. Mm -hmm. am, I, am I correct? Yes, you're right. You're right. And, and so, yeah, so, yes, that's that's just, you know, as you're familiar here with different cultures, this is what stands out, you know, uh, uh, you learn. And, and I could tell, like, if somebody's name it doesn't sound sound like one of the, the week then I can I can tell from a different ethnic group or maybe mm. they're from North, or maybe they're from, mm. from somewhere so you know that that's and that's I mean there's so many different ethnic groups groups right there Ghana you know you know because in America people think that they hear Af Africa and they think oh oh Africa and it's just like <laughs> you know, you, know, you can go with in Ghana and mm -hmm. find 25 five ethnics in a particular area area you know just, uh, mm -hmm. in, in speaking those groups will speak different languages. All, all right, so now tell me how you, how did you get to become or, or your interest in engineering? Whoa. <laughs> uh -huh. I didn't expect that. Um, <laughs> um, part of the reason I, uh, I was good with mathematics, you know, uh, in the secondary school. I actually represented my school in some of the competition science competition so i was good the first uh, you know the top people i was from uh, what we call ss1 to the time i completed the, yes so uh, the option was i did physics chemistry and mathematics as the elective as we call them and so once you do those then you are likely to take uh, engineering or physics or chemistry or mathematics or any other uh, that requires those um, uh, electives at the university level, and uh, I, I didn't want to be a doctor. So obviously, 
<laughs> I was good engineer. With engineering. Yes. So I think that was it. Well, well, how did you then open? Uh, I guess open a uh, or or start a construction company. And how does how do you go from um, well, like engineering? I guess that makes makes sense. I guess, but you were doing ag agriculture engineering though. That's a little different. Yes. Yes. Um, agric agricultural engineering is made up of almost every bit of engineering. Uh, that's how you have to define it. But it's about eighty to ninety percent mechanical engineering. Hmm. You know, but it focuses more in the agri sector. So uh, let's say processing plants, uh, waste management, uh, uh, agri machinery, like okay. mainly the engines, the excavators, the bulldozers, the, the, or even the combined harvesters, the tractors, they mainly form uh, part of agri engineering. But um, an engin engineering as a course is very flexible, especially if you look at mechanical engineering, agri engineering, uh, civil engineering, almost you can you can transition uh, with that kind of training to 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 build in anything. You know, it's not that much restricting. And um, the postgraduate, the process engineering is more like a systems you know, engineering. The processes in in production. Understood. You know, okay. So taking any biological material and transforming it into a usable product. You know, the things in between. Uh, but uh, trans transition or moving to construction. I think it's just the entrepreneur, uh, you know, once you understand how a business is built, then um, any business you go into, you know, you can master the process. So uh, I did not really restrict myself to say that, let me be in uh, process engineering as, as a business, but, you know, let me take that skill set and build where I think I have some understanding and some leverage. What are some projects that you work on from the construction side? Well, uh, we did it for about 10 years. Uh, we did some for um, individual companies. So we built polyclinics. Uh, we have done some electrical works. We have built pastures. Pasture is uh, where you build big uh, feed for animals. So oh, like wow. maybe 500 hectare land, you're grazing. So we took contracts like that. Uh, Semi-government organizations that we work for. Uh, we've built... Uh, platforms for plants for mining companies as well we've built market structures you know things like that and then and are, are you still doing that are you still doing that uh now we're focusing more on our own projects what we call we we are building our own real estate development company what it means is that we we find our own money mm -hmm. and then we build apartments and then we rent them um i so that's what we do <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you, start, it, you laugh because I don't think everybody, everybody else started laughing cause, because when you said that, said that, <laughs> my mind started, started working. I was like, wait a minute, minute now. So, so you you know how to do all of this? Yes. So mainly that's ground up I, in Ghana. Yes, sir, in Ghana. Yeah. And Ooh. so from the from the various construction experiences, um, from the various projects, now we built for ourselves. Before we were building for people. Now. We focus on building to own, you know, building some 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 investment, some wealth, so to say. So we, we built and we we adding up, and uh, part of it is coming from other businesses. You know, the, the funds come from that. Not, I understand. Not... Well. <laughs> I, I get it. I I love, love the strategy. I love everything, everything you're saying. I mean, it's like it's like it's uh, you're, you're taking the resources and you're putting it into real estate. And anybody who understands. Mm -hmm. Real estate state knows the cry anywhere in Ghana right now. Not just a cry. I mean, everywhere, everywhere where I went, from Tatakrade to Cape Coast, Coast to Tale to uh, Kasi to Tema, uh, you can, and of course, of course, Accra, you you can see the explosion. I mean, I mean, there's an explosion happening in, in Accra like I've never seen seen before ever. I, I've I've I watched DC uh, explode, explode Washington DC. I watched it explode. Back in the early '90s, and and with with real estate uh, development, and seeing the same, I watched Atlanta to explode with, with real estate development. But even, yeah. even with all that, across doing, I've never seen seen. Mm -hmm. it. And the difference there is that our market, uh, the funding, is not as in other markets. You know, in other markets, let's say you want to you, in the real estate or uh, in the construction real estate sector, you will have developers, you have investors. And you have um, um, people, the contractors themselves. So let's say somebody 
thinks of a project. He designs it yeah. and he gets a contractor. But then he finds his own money, you know? So the contractor will just come in and build for you. You own the project. Then maybe you can even sell it to another person who will come and buy it and rent it, you know? Yeah. And the funding is a bit different because here, um, I don't want to go to the bank to borrow such money from right. the bank because the interest is not, it's not good, you know, for such thing. Yes. Because it takes me, let's say, a year to build or two. Uh, if I go for such interest, then I'd, I have no business. Mm. You know, so you you we want to leverage our our skills as a, our skill set, our expertise in the construction, so that we so that we build, you know, at uh, at discount if you want. Understood. If I'm building, I'll build as a certain advantage. That profit then becomes part of the funding. Uh, so if I have a million and I'm building, maybe after building it, I will sell it more. You know, but yes, this yes, time yes. around, we source the funds and we build it ourselves. So, uh, uh, you know, it's a bit different. So you're looking to be able to keep the, um, you're going to do like a uh, like a build and hold process. Is that correct? Exactly. Exactly. Build and hold. So, so, yes. So you, saw, you source your money, you design it yourself, you put your team there, they build it, and then you own it, you manage it. And, and you rent it out. Yes, sir. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, that's brilliant. I mean, again, that, that that's the pathway. And if you and if you do those wherever you are in Ghana, then uh, you'll you'll definitely amass the wealth because see what's half happening, and and, uh, and a lot of people are curious, you know, about what the the process, how it goes. But you're leveraging, like you say, you're leveraging your knowledge, knowledge, expertise, your skill set, yes. and that carries a value in the marketplace because yeah. you know how to do it. So you're able to. And then you're also, you know, the Ghana system too, which is very different mm-hmm. from the American system. Mm-hmm. Like you said, in America, you just go buy, get a loan and, own and do your thing. Mm. But, and I think the interest rates might be lower in America too. Yes, it's lower. Um, but, but that's, but again, that's, that's a part of what, what you understand. Cause I'm, um, uh, have, have a, a condo in, um, in Kwabenya, no, no, a lot of okay. people, that's let's that's, let's just say say Accra, you know. <laughs> so everybody <laughs> kind of has an idea, an idea. And um, um, what I was able to do with the fin- finding is basically self financed and uh, put down a certain percentage, and then you know because it's being built, then I'm able to pay a, a certain amount, but it's paid off by the time the the project is complete. Mm. So there is no loan attached. Mm. To it. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not. It wasn't an expensive property at all, but, but it's. Like, I, I I appreciated that because there was no no interest attached to it. Um, now obviously the monthly payment is is considerably higher because it's be, be going to be paid off within uh, the time frame frame. The I think it's either a year. It's a year. It's twelve months. So it's, it's paid off. But and and then I don't have to deal with any loans or the other stuff that's going on and and everything that you talked about but in america on the other hand what we do is we go look for the loans and and and, and they even have something here called hard money lenders and then you have hard money lenders with very high interest rates and primarily people use hard money if they're doing rehabs mm. or quote unquote flips you know if, mm. if somebody's doing flip, then they'll do hard money which kind of makes, makes sense in one sense because you're using other people money Money, to be yeah. able to make money, so yeah. uh, so in this particular system, it works uh, works well. Well, if you're able to sell the prop property, um, yeah. otherwise you get stuck with that interest. But I but I get I get it. So with um, so tell me about your, your book books because you said you're an oh. author also. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, build, yeah, so. build and build and selling books. books. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so um, perspective. I wrote it in 2016. Okay, it's just about the the. You know, when you go to school as Africans, um, just like anywhere, you are not really taught about money and how to come out and build a business. Hmm. You really go to school and uh, you, you're a good student. And you, you, when you finish, mainly you're, you're conditioned to come and look for a job. You know, so uh, that's, that's the, I mean, nobody... You don't ask the child in school when you complete what when you grow what you want to become. They don't they don't want to tell you when I when I complete I want to become a, a business owner. That's not really something on the table. You are, you want to be accountant, lawyer, engineer, and mainly what it means is that you have to go and work 
for another company or for the government. So uh, having gone through that, I put my thoughts in a book that you are conditioned this way. But when you come out, do you even have the jobs for you to say that I just, I'm, I'm, I'm just out of school, I'm just going to get a job. If you're lucky to get a job, no problem. But how about if you, you don't get the job? What do you do? You know, so that's the, that's the condition. And I'm sure you met a lot of young people who are saying that uh, I want to travel. That is part of it. Because you're looking at either I get a job which pays me well, or maybe travel to America or England, uh, or sometimes even, you know, join politics, which is career, or start a church, you know, those are the options. But uh, for me, <laughs> you know, livelihood. Real, real quick, quick. You slid it in there. Oh. Okay, you know. Go there before I go there. Okay, keep going. I move back to it. Okay, so I put my thoughts there. That after your engineering school, if you want to start a business. You are technically not, not equipped because when you complete engineering, at least you should work in industry for about five years to get expertise. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you don't get that industrial exposure, which means that you don't have anything that you can produce and take it to the market as an engineer, myself as an example. Okay, so what kind of business can you start with not, virtually no skill set, but you have a degree or you have a second degree, something like that. Now, in terms of money, you don't even know how you are going to manage the money, unless you come from a very wealthy family, you know? And uh, in terms of selling, because selling is so crucial in business, mm -hmm. the leadership that you have to provide, the people that you are going to recruit or team up with, do you understand who to pick, who not to pick? Do you even understand the market that we have, the culture, how the people buy? What do they look for? How do you even manage these people? Hmm. You know, so all these things you're dealing with them. And then the superstition, I'm building a business. I get to a place I'm stuck. Who do I blame? Um, do I have to go and pray to God for him to solve it for me? Or is it a structure that I have to study? So how do you learn to build systems? Yeah, like a man, all these you, things you, we you, went through you, in 10 saying, years. Saying, what you're talking about, about sounds like what, what a lot of people dealing with here in America. <laughs> you see, so uh, you make a lot of mistakes. You go through like that, and then after you have had some level of exposure in terms of what business is really about, then you start to see the success. And that does not come for me. It does not come before five years. It does not. Okay, so you, so you are going to go through a lot. Okay, okay. So and you're build the meta framework. You know, for you, to, it's, it's like a boxer. The boxer must think a certain way. If you take a soldier, if you meet a military officer, he thinks differently from the civilian, hmm. you know? So the same with an entrepreneur or with entrepreneurship or somebody who has completed school or who never went to school and says that I want to build a business. There's a certain way you have to think. And those things don't come readily to you just because you have completed school. So you know? do you get, how, how do you develop this, this the, the set that you're talking okay, about? Okay, so then when you start something, that's why you, any anything that you can start with. So we started... Uh, with trying to build, you know, construction company, trying to sell. So we have, we have, Envy is is multiple retailer of fashion products in Ghana. We are in the malls. We have multiple, we have a lot of guests. This uh, is with Yes, with my wife, yes. Right, we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, keep going. So how do you learn all this and manage all this? The kind of framework of thinking that you need to get to that stage. And we are not looking at my uncle who's a big man to help me. You don't have any. Your parents may not have that. Or they are even telling you to stop everything and go back to school again, Ooh. you know, or travel. How do you go against all this to say that this is my dream, this is what is in my heart, and I want to stick with it until it works. And that's why I, 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 I wrote Perspective. And uh, we have done over 4,000 copies or so, you know. You've sold you know? 4,000 copies? Yes, yes, yes. You know, wow. some of them, some of them, uh, we, we've done multiple printings, actually. Some of them, we help people too. We go to schools, we go to um, uh, prisons and also help some of them. Because it's the, the, the problem I see is that is the, everything is the mind. What you know is what you do. The world is how you see it. Yes. And so uh, somebody will say, no, it's so difficult. 
is what is the mental process is the information you have the data you have if the data is not strong you will be weak you know and so we are here trying and we are not saying it's difficult but you meet somebody who is even doing far better and they still be telling you it's difficult because of the processes so i've read a lot of books actually i've read it. i i was born a, i was born into a christian home you know I, so in terms of christianity i've been part of it but uh, building business you need a whole different mindset hmm. so that's why i wrote uh, perspective actually and we have done a couple of tv programs radio programs uh, in ghana and um, it's all over, you know, major radio station, PCFM, we did a whole series about six months and the, and the effect was, was serious. Oh, then I, one I, of our yeah, TV stations, uh, which talks about business, I was there the other time. It, because it's you doing it and getting the wisdom from the ground, you know, and once you get the wisdom from the ground, then you know, this is how it works. And uh, managing the money. If you went to school, you don't know how to make money. That's a fact. You know how to work for salary. But to build wealth, you have to be informed properly about money. And most of us did not. For instance, in Ghana, my grandfather was a cocoa farmer. He never went to school. Now, about maybe 30 years to the time that he passed, he had a land. He had his own tipper truck. He would uh, pile sun. You go and buy sun and pile them. So when he got to a point that he could not uh, work again, was he started to sell that sun to people who wanted to build. Hmm. And that was his future. You know, that was so his, his guarantee. His, his retirement was accumulating That's right. sand. That's right. So I'm putting this in terms of, so like, like the American audience or, mm -hmm. or the Western mm -hmm. audience will understand. So what he did, which was brilliant, mm -hmm. he accumulated sand. Yes. Then he could no longer work. Yes. He then took took the sand and sold yeah. it. Yes. So he was selling them to people who built. Now he didn't go to school. He had his own cocoa farm. He had his own cattle, sheep, chicken. He didn't die broke. Now in Ghana, we have professors who go on retirement and they virtually have to depend on the national pension scheme. But they that, went to school. So that, the 800 CDs a month, is that what it is? It's something like that, you know? So this is a person who may have gone to school, Yale, Harvard, Oxford, come back, lecture for years. Then in his retirement, he has to depend on the government. Okay, now, now, now let's, let's, let's stop there for a second, second. Because I don't think they really, really understand what you just said. Because we're talking okay. to two audiences. We're talking to um, our folks in Ghana and other par parts of Africa. And you're, not, and you're also talking to this Western, Western audience. Who's who's dealing many of the same same things you're talking about? about. So they're they're listen because we we have professors in America uh, who have have multiple degrees, but they're burdened burden with student debt. They're they they're can't even you know unless they were intentional about about getting themselves outside of their concentration. They're now now struggling, trying to pick up up positions for there, trying to you know make it happen. But what you said was really key that there are people who went to school in Oxford and hard and they come back to Ghana. Yes. And, and professors, they're highly educated, but at the end of their career, they are forced to rely on the gov government to be, take care of them themselves. Did yes. I hear that proper, properly? That's, that's right. And it's because the whole education structure, as we have it, whether you're trained as a chemist or engineer like myself, you will not be taught how to take care of your money and you will not be taught how to build wealth. And I'm saying that our culture in terms of Africa, this, the, the, the structures for wealth is still in the culture. It's not, it was not destroyed by the colonizers, no. It's still in the cocoa farm. Mm. It's still in my grandfather building up something and sell, you know, it. So it, that's why when they go to school, until they intentionally study money, it will be very difficult for them to build wealth because then you have to rely solely on the salary. You know, and that takes a lot of time. And that's why I wrote that book, Streamline, How to Teach Yourself Money. Because if your financial knowledge is weak, it will be very difficult for you to run a business. Running business is purely about finance. You know, you're doing mathematical, mathematics, but it's worth money. So who do you employ at what point? Which product do you, which loan do you procure at what point? If, you, if that information is wrong, you will meet so many problems in your business. 
you know, and you, you run probably, probably, you fail. probably fail if, if you're not prepared. That's right. You will fail. If you're not prepared for the mental <laughs> aspect of it, because right. mentally, when you when you take those losses or you, you're you going through your learning curve, I, I call it experience tuition, when you're going through that phase, phase if you're not prepared when you take the, the uh, 200,000 CDs, mm-hmm. that's the Ghanaian currency, uh, or the or the fifty thousand dollar USD loss, and then you're like, "What happened here? How do we rebuild from this?" Because that takes a mental mentalness too. That's right. Because if you're That's not right. ready for it, you that mm-hmm. that'll that could be that could be catastrophic. That, you find yeah. yourself saying, I, "I quit. I can't do this." Mm-hmm. You, the book sounds amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, I I want to want to encourage you to consider doing a course where people can sign up anywhere in the world. Wow. Okay. Where they can sign up anywhere in the world because people need need what you're talking about. No, no, in um in Gabon, in the Gambia, in South Africa, in Burundi, in in Mbique. they need this information in America, in the UK, in the Caribbean, in South America, in Australia, in Mexico. Uh, people need what you're talking about. Because it's so important, like you said, that if you, most educational systems are, are trained to create laborers, mm. people to make, to fill a position. But if you're going to have, have sustainable wealth over time, then it's going to require you to, to look at some alternative. And I, and I get hearing your story. That's what you said you did. You, you were the agricultural engineer, your process. Yes. Engineer. Yes. And then you, you said, wait a minute. I need to go build these properties for my for my. Yes, exactly. So that's what I did in, in Stumuli. And I tried to talk about how to recondition the African mind. Uh, because, um, you know, I, if you go through the streets of Accra, you see a lot of books on finance from um, a lot of them American authors. Now, those are good in terms of the principles. Yes. But in terms of hitting the ground, the practicalities, the, the, the problems that we meet, how we handle them, I think you need the relevant content from the ground, you know, how to understand how things work here. Now, if I'm a Lebanese or Indian or Chinese and I want to develop in Ghana, they come with that money. They, they, they procure money. loan cheaper. They come. Or maybe sometimes they partner with somebody. They come. That's why you can see some buildings. That is it. But if you are like me and you want to build the money here and put into these things, you really need to think as an African. And one of the things that you have to also solve is that you have to be uh, brutally optimistic as an African about yourself and as about the continent. And you have to talk uh, to defend Africa and talk with need or with dignity. Yes. Because everything that is being thrown at you is trying to tell you that you are nothing and you, have, you don't have anything and you can do anything. And you hear people saying that the, the government is corrupt, you know, that people are dishonest, all those. You cannot build wealth if you think like that, because creative ideas don't come to the, the pessimists. Creative ideas come to those who believe it's possible. So if, if, even if it's 1% positivity that you have to focus on, because that is what you need, let the others focus on the 99%. It's okay. Right. They let, leave, let them do what they're going to do. That's right. You know, but if you want to build as an entrepreneur, then you need a lot of optimism, a lot of hope, because... Everything is telling you, you it can't work, you know. And at at every point in time, you can give up. So you really have to be called like a madman, crazy. Yeah, yeah, and you they know? will call crazy. They will, will. <laughs> but you know what? But let them call you crazy, crazy, because I've discovered the ones that call you crazy. Those are the ones that are crazy, you know. So you, you just <laughs> you know what? You call me crazy. That's all right. Watch my smoke, smoke. And that's right. That's what, right. How would you encourage? Um, Let's let's say somebody going into high school and they're trying to make mm-hmm. some important decisions and they're look, looking and they're saying, all right, the family pressure, because I rec- recognize in, in certain countries in Africa, Africa, family pressure to be, uh, and this is around the world, this is, this is not Africa, this is, 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 is India, you name some place, family, mm-hmm. family pressure says you're going to be a doctor, you'll be a lawyer, mm-hmm. you're going to be this. And for that, that person who's themselves, but I, I, I want to build wealth. Um, I don't. I don't want to go into a bunch of debt in order for this to happen. How do you encourage that person 
who's dealing dealing with that type of social pressure, family family pressure to go down a particular road. How would you encourage encourage them with principles that you've shared? Well, in my third book, Resilience, I talk about how to build courage and strength as an entrepreneur. Uh, Family would always want to protect you. You know, my parents actually live in America and they will not want us to be here in Ghana trying to build something. They would, <laughs> they, they would rather have us <laughs> live somewhere and practice as engineers, you know. And, uh, but once you have a desire in your heart, mm-hmm. um, that never dies. It never dies. So is it that you listen to that and, and train and go and work that thing out? Or you become sad and follow the family dream. Now, I would say that because the family invested money in you, engage them, show them respect. Even if they want to take, they want you to take job, maybe take it. But still, school your mind, school yourself, learn about the business you want to build. Use your time, the free time that you have to learn about selling, about the industry you want to be in, about wealth, about finance, about how to build structures. At a point when you start, and the thing is, you don't just learn about them. At a point, you must start. And you start small. Once you start to see progress, once you start to see things coming, the same family will turn around, you know, to say, now you, they, they, well, see you have, well. <laughs> <laughs> they see you have 100 workers, 200 workers. They see the business. They see you build this. Uh, at that point, you know, even if they are not happy, uh, with the father, you didn't become a doctor. At least they can see that you're doing something significant. You know, and then most of them, you see the world, most of us don't know what it takes to build a business because they have talked fear into us that building business is difficult. Is, you know, they have put a lot of statuses there so that we all stay out of it. And then we all just have to uh, stay and say that this is okay. Um, I think that the, the parents may also be part of the same thinking. But once you start and they see that maybe it's possible, and particularly those of us in Ghana, we have people who have completed school and maybe you have, found, you have tried several times. You don't have uh, any you know, place, any, any so-called offer. Mm-hmm. It's better you try something. Maybe at least there's a chance that you can win, you know, than doing nothing at all. And if you try, be proud of it. Right whatever that you're selling, if it's cocoa, if it's watching that you're selling, be proud of that, you know, because you said said, said cocoa and what? Yes, cocoa, porridge, the porridge that they sell. And what, it was something else you said. Or watching. Yeah, you said, you said, I thought you said watching. (laughs) (laughs) See, I catch these little things you say. say, It's like my favorite dish coming out of God. So that's why I was like, when you say watching, watching. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but like you said yeah. hey, with Coco Awache yes. make sure that you do the very best with it that's right uh, um, I, do, I did say I wanted to come back to something that you said earlier <laughs> so you said that um, the options that a lot of people have when they come out of high school I guess or college they, they run that down for me again the options that they have and I'll tell you when you say what caught my attention A church. <laughs> you just <laughs> <laughs> you know that's an option now. He skipped all the other ones he said. A church. Yeah. Yes. So that's a business, that's a business option. Is that is that yes. correct? <laughs> it's a it's a business option. I uh, um it's a business option. It's a way people are trying to build profile, they will deny it. Uh, they will talk against it. They will say that you are talking them, but that's the reality, you know. So the, 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 but they do that in America too. I mean, it's mm-hmm. similarities. I mean, it's 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 a lot of similarities. I mean, <laughs> I'm familiar with the church world and understanding. Yes. You know, so I, yeah. I, and, I'm, and I'm not going to go that road today. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but when you said it, I was like, oh, they do that there there too. Oh, okay, that's yes. how, that's how this yes. works out. All right. Yes. Uh, so they do that because they, they basically don't have, they can't get a job, job or don't want to work. Uh, See? I saw a billboard in a crowd that said every pastor must work. And, and I looked, and I was like, I was like, wow. 
I was like, wow, this is this this is deep, you know. So, but go ahead, you want to say something? You you see that the history of education eh, was more of a theology, and and you know the the way the 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 Europeans introduced education here yeah, was was to help us to read the Bible, you know. Okay. So the very first people, the so-called school that they brought, because we had our own way of educating our people, you know, and they had their own way of keeping information. And so when they said that they should educate them, they started with the church, a kind of education. They didn't start with science education, engineering education, mathematics education, no. Hmm. And, and education really is when you give the people tools to transform the materials they have into something usable and to solve the problems that they have. Now, that has stayed with us all these years. Okay, so even when you go to school uh, in the university, the engineering student will be probably be playing keyboard in church than go to the lab to come up with a product, hmm. you know? So when it comes out of school, industry is not trying to come up with a product. I played the keyboard and I was playing it in the choir in the university. Oh, you play a yeah. keyboard also, too? Yes, but show, I was playing. Y'all related. So we, we might, might be related here. <laughs> similarities going on. <laughs> got my situation back. So, you know? so, you, so you said, that, okay, hold, hold on. Because because see, now I, I didn't know we, know we were about to go down this road. But it's it's here. So you said that, that because because Europe created the educational system, the, the, the one that we want now. Is it right? right? Yes. Okay. And the they created this educational system is not, not to give the tools, but to, to be able to be able to teach the people to read the Bible. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. That's it. So why would they want to, to teach the people how to re read the Bible? You why know, you, in your, your understanding, why would yes, they? My understanding is that if I teach, the tools? Okay. So if I give you the technology and I give you higher, um, engineering models and theories, how to build a gun, build a ship, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, build a, build a technology. Gun, build a mm -hmm. Yes, if you equip you. Now, don't forget, everybody, the, the reason, part of the reasons they came to Africa was for the material, the richness of Africa, right. the gold, the diamond, the cobalt, the aluminum, all those. Mm -hmm. That's what everybody wants. Now, if Africa were to be equipped to turn their own raw materials, then who, who would come here? So somebody has to make sure that you are put to sleep, you know, or your attention is diverted to something else so that the very thing that they need, they keep it. Why should I give you the technology to mine the, to mine the, the gold or to drain the oil? So it will take time. I guess I'm still still trying to figure out well, why would they, would they teach them to go to the Bible then? What, 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 how would they use that as a way to slow people down? Because education is really, I, I, I don't know the course you did, but then if you do sciences, mathematics, physics, chemistry, mm -hmm. that's how you can build industry, isn't it? So I want to stop you from building industries. I don't want you to- So how, do, how, how does teaching the Bible, Bible do? No, but I'm telling you, this is the most important thing. Okay. The, the religion is the most important thing. I'm okay. teaching you go to heaven. Don't okay. focus on the material things here. <laughs> forget about the gold. Forget about the forget about the diamond. It's not important. Right. For, right. For, it's focus for on God. Rich and to enter the kingdom of easier. That's to right. Travel, easier for Emphasize all. that thing in the heads of the people. So if I'm sending my child to school, I want him to become a theologian. Because that's that's what is available. Mm. Yeah. So that, technically, that is not an education. So we don't have a lot of, uh, you know, the, for maybe 150 years ago, where people were sent through education, they were engineers. No. Right. Okay, okay, 150 years ago, they weren't being, being sent to school, becoming engineers. That's right. So they were teachers, they were lawyers, to the best of my knowledge. Mm -hmm. But the skill set to build the materials and innovate, th those were- To produce, to produce something, to be a producer. That's right. So, okay. They had to manage those. So for music, yes. For sports, yes. For entertainment, yes. But for take this, build this plant, build this machine, build this, this build, produce build. Uh, this late machine, this drilling machine or drain machine or uh, rip boring machine, build the engine. 
you know, set this processing plant. Those were carefully uh, controlled. That but, kind of information. Okay, okay. But, but, but now, but now, but, but, but with that though, you would see where in Egypt and other places throughout the, throughout the continent where quote unquote, quote, lack of, lack of better terms, Afri Africans would instruct this. They had these engineering skills. They had uh, this ability to do it. So how did the colonizer Kaiser come and manipulate this and then turn it? Because really this, everything you're talking about, the lack of knowledge of how to manage resources, the, uh, the mindset, all of this is a trickle down effect of something that had happened along the way that mm -hmm. created this system where, by, by which we think, because we, mm. we think a particular way or by and large, of course, mm. not everyone, but by and large, large systemically, on a global scale, because what you're saying mirrors, mirrors happening in many parts of America. Many students come out of college with multiple degrees, uh, ill-equipped to be able to manage resources or start a business, or they, they have to be intentional and go down a different road, push, push back against culture and say, I'm going to do this and, and, and invest the time into it. So what happened? And I guess okay. from going from... Okay the engineers of the pyramids to mm -hmm. now this new generation of people who, who are trying to figure out. Okay, so um, see the the inter interjection, the interception, the 500 years from the 14th century, you know, mm -hmm. when they came, they were on the coast. Yes. Those in the forest were doing their own thing. Right. But let's say when they started to de divide us, to say this is Ghana, this is Nigeria. Yes, in 1885, right? Uh, that's right. Now, we, we accepted their form of living, their form of governance, their, their, system, right. their form of education. Now, if you accept that, even if you knew individually, you could have people who knew that. Mm -hmm. But structurally, the pattern that we had agreed was to follow the S. You know, right. that, that, that was the pattern. And so now send your child to school. Mm -hmm. But you sent that child to school, even if he knew how to mind the by the time that child comes out, just, just as I give the example that the professor now may forget that he has to create wealth. But my grandfather didn't go to school and he never forgot how to create wealth. So that now a system is created where you may be somebody, but by the time that you are processed, you have melt through that structure, you become another one. Mm. But then the content that they have given you will make you not go back and build for your people, for yourself build industry your mind will be shifted from there and one one or two people may pass through that but as a group to say that if you have 100 students maybe 80 would have to do these things because we need to build industries that's that's the number but if i give you five just five and then 90, 95 are doing all other things the five will not be able to do anything because then there is no intention to produce these people who can build things to industrialize, you know? So, so part of what we fight with is the form of training that systematically uh, we've been given in Ghana and everywhere in Africa, you know? The and world, the world lusts after, we, 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 I'm gonna use them, them terms too. The world lusts after master's degree, degree mm -hmm. higher degrees. They, this is they feel they're edu educated. They feel as though they've arrived. I mean, I, I, when you start when you start breaking this thing down, down, you talk about distractions. That could even be a potential distraction because you mm -hmm. talked about your grandfather not going to school, but he was he was, he was not bro broke. Uh, but then I, I know so many people with, with multiple degrees that are they, they look great, but they're in their forties and fifties, $300,000, dollars, eighty three thousand dollars, hundred thousand dollars, dollars of student loan debt, trapped in 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 a particular industry, and really this in industry extracting all, all of their talent to build itself up, while paying them this, this salary, mm. and even we we've, we've been embraced in an appreciate you know, not I don't want to say appreciate because you should appreciate pre appreciate what you what, what you what you want to get. But embrace and um, um, become comfortable with it. Become co comfortable with this salary yes. without ever real realizing talent 
that you bring to the ta table that's right that's, that's actually building these multi-million yes. billion billion dollar industries yes. Yes. and they said we'll pay you a hundred thousand dollars a year yes. we'll pay you and i'm using now i'm talking american now you know yeah <laughs> or we'll um six hundred thousand cds a year and he's like yes you know but you're making them, them six sixty million million cds a year or millions of dollars, your creativity, your, your idea. And so what I, I think a lot of people are starting to do because of what you're doing and is, is, is they're waking up and they're saying, wait, wait a minute, I'll use this job as my, my startup cap for my business. business. But while I'm working this job, I'm, I'm going to take my money, I'm, I'm going to manage my resources, I'm going to allocate resources just probably so I can use that, use that startup capital and, and get that chain rolling over and over here. So that, and so people are waking up to, to it and, um, See, yes, the, you know, can you can you imagine? So let's say they had a lot of thousands of of my kind. Yeah, trying. You come out of school, and they say you have all this go cocoa, coconut, cashew, gold, diamond. All of you, let's have a structure where you go and try, build some skill set, and then go and start some industry. We will start to stop to say that oh, maybe some Chinese are trying to build a factory here, because then you have. A lot of us on the ground who believe that we must build our own industries. Yes. But if you don't have the, the required training, the required education, can you build a structured industry? Yeah. yeah that yeah, will be yeah. difficult. No, no. You know, that will be difficult. And so all of, all of that, anywhere you see Africans, it's not just on the continent, everywhere. That side, they try to turn it a little so that then we look at the other side. You know, and uh, then we forget here. We forget the innovation. You know, we forget the industry. We forget the wealth building. We forget all those, and then we look just here. And then the people. Now you go, you see that the others are telling you that they have the expertise to mine the gold. And then when they structure the company, the very top five is all you know. Yes. They, not us. Yes, I got because. You. That is something that we have to look at. And so I think that is part of the reason that they intentionally took the higher technical education up. Out of apprenticeship, that's fine. Carpenter, mason, that's okay. But it gets to a level you need a highly technical mind to structure. Build some of these structures. In that's right. And that side, they said that no, give them law, give them theology, give them uh, literature, give them English, you know? Take the science, take the engineering, take the mathematics out. And, so now, and but, that we have to break. But now you start to see a, a strong STEM sector, uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. You're starting to see a mm -hmm. that, especially in places like Angola, Nigeria, mm -hmm. uh, Ghana. You're starting mm -hmm. to see this strong uh, presence. And I think because right. a lot of people are pushing back, it, like yes. you, are pushing yes. back saying, hey, yeah. you know what, let's, let's get this technology and, and yes. let's couple that with the entrepreneurship Understanding. Let's couple it along right. with finance, financial literacy. Right. Let's put it all right. together. And, and right. at that point, we and when I say we, meaning those of us who are championing these causes, um, we're now able to compete on a global scale, and that's why they're going. So many. I saw a commercial in Dubai with them trying to go to to Angola because what's happening in Angola and what Angola is doing, how they help Portugal. Go get out of some mess recently financially because of what what angola has going on it's uh i tell you we could go on and on and on and on and talk about this and we need to do a part <laughs> we need to do a part two part two i want people to find uh well where can they get the book that's that's that's, uh, that's what i want them to know where can they find your book and yeah, we can also talk about the okay uh, we can also talk about the written and how we built it as well <laughs> in the retail <written> shops <laughs> Right. <laughs> so what did you do part two? <laughs> yeah. So, so so when they find your book and where can they find more more about Amazon? You? Amazon uh Kindle. I have Am okay, okay, so get on Kindle. Yes, sir. Yeah, oh, cool. So like, Amazon Kindle and, and the title of the book again? Yeah. Um perspective is uh, how to develop the mindset uh to start and build your own business. All right, and uh, streamline. Streamline is streamline another. Is, streamline is how to teach yourself money. That's the second how one. To, how to teach yourself money. So, so streamline how to teach yourself money. Pers yes. Perspective 
is the other book. So it's two books, books Streamline and okay. Perspective. And there's a third one, Resilience, How to Build a Courage. Resilience. Yes. Uh, how to Build yes. Courage. How to and build, strength courage. To build Your Own Business. And so you would type in Yannick. Robina Obang Duco, correct? Correct? Yes, sir. Yep. That's how I would do it. Do your name, name, and everything goes up, and, and all of that, <laughs> is, all that stuff is right there, where people can, and uh, they can go to Kindle. And, and the reason why, why I think it's is because Kindle, Kindle opens you up to the world, and no matter where you are, you are in the world, somebody can can read your book. And that's what we want people to do. And if you're watching right right now, no matter you're watching in the world, we have people watching us every everywhere by way of YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, whatever platform we're, we're pushing to. Um, uh, make sure you go and get this resource for, for yourself. Uh, shout out to all of our folks in, in Australia, all of all of our folks in Congo, South Africa, Tanzania, Tanzania. Uh, folks who watch us in the Gambia, Guinea. Uh, uh, make sure you get this inf information because it's, it's all about thinking and changing the minds. And when you begin to do that, and it's cult cultural because again, each culture is different, but you change changing it for yourself. That's where it's going to start. And then that's how, that's how the culture is going to change. And, and you get the information. You, you immerse yourself in these three books. And you, you get knowledge. And you begin to share, share it with other people. And this is how, how we tear the walls of this information that causation is still peddling throughout, throughout this world, all over the world. world. And it might, might not be a massive movement right, right now. Uh, but I, I believe this is, this is a part of a massive move, movement that's happening. And that's why, why I wanted to have this conversation today. And I, and I think, think that it's important. So make sure you go to Amazon on, and these three free books and, uh, and you can get it on, on again on Kindle. And, and, and please, please let that Quabba know where, where you are. And uh, you can type it in the comments below. And, and this is really to, to say you, right now is something that you can do. do. You can go to Amazon on Kindle, do it right now. now and, you know, just type in the comments. It's, I mean, right now, now, this is I need for my grandchild. This is something I think I need for me. This is something I need my spouse. This is something I need for the community. This is something I need for people to be able to see. See, And that's how we bridge the gap. You're, have, you're having us have a conversation right now. Popping us in Accra. I'm in D.C. Last week, we were, we were both in Accra. But having this conversation, seeing the value in this conversation is what we're doing in the African diaspora. And of course, any, anybody, anybody can get the book. So it's not ju just for one group. group of people. Obviously, it's going to be targeted be a particular way. But this, this is how we the gap. And the, the topics are, are clearly that we're dealing with in America. So all of, the, all of my American, American viewers, make sure, sure. If if thing, even if you're just do, doing it to show you, uh, <laughs> make sure you go get that book on Amazon Kindle, Kindle, and uh, and we'll see how we can continue to get it distributed throughout the world, even even uh, hard copy, copy. But right now, it's about getting, getting information out there quickly and getting it out there effectively. That's the deal. So, Kwabana, listen, ah, ah, again, we got part two. This part <laughs> one, like I said, I didn't know where we were going, going this, but hey, we <laughs> we did it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I already, this is one of the absolute best interviews I've ever done. And wow. I've been doing a whole lot of interviews in this, in this one of the best interviews I've done. Thank you. Because of just your, just, just we, we've come out of territory. People ask a lot of questions, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> brother or sister who's about to start that church because they thought that was going to be their job. Now they're going to be reconsidering. <laughs> or they're going to send, send some messages to you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Well, please tell Marie I said hello, and again, thank you so much. We've been talking to to 